Good afternoon, and we would like to welcome you to our first podcast of Making Sense of Diversity. My name's Larry Jefferson, and I'm here with my colleague... Dantrell Smith from the great city of Memphis, Tennessee, best city in the world for barbecue, brother. So you say, so you say. <laughs> so during this time, uh, we're just going to sit back and try to dive into multiculturalism and and what it means and what does it mean to society. So we're going to start off a little bit about telling you about ourselves. I'll let Dantrell start. Yeah. So um, good afternoon. My name is Dantrell Smith. Uh, like I said, from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm um, telling you a little about myself. I actually uh, went to undergrad at Iowa State University um, in Ames, Iowa. Um, and so I had a great time, majored in electrical engineering. Um, decided to go for my master's at the University of South Carolina um, in higher education. Um, and then moved to Texas and uh, found out that barbecue is definitely different in Texas. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I decided to work at UNT. Um, and there at UNT, did my doctorate in higher education and uh, went to UTA. After leaving UTA, came over to Tarrant County College and um, have thoroughly enjoyed my experience, man. You know, it's uh, I was telling a student earlier that this is the place for me. I'm not saying that, you know, I just had bad experience at the other schools, but I just feel right. like this is the good fit. Yeah, yeah. Myself, I'm a community college grad. I started out at uh, Dallas County Community College then went on to UNT, and then uh, did my master's at Angelo State in psychology and in education. And then I'm currently in a uh, doctoral program that's making me go ball more than I already (laughs) am at uh, Abilene Christian. Uh, So I went from there to back to DCCD to work and give back to those students. And now I'm at Tarrant County on my second year and I agree with uh, Dantrell this has definitely been a, a good fit for me uh, especially at, at, at the southeast campus yeah you know um, one of the things that's and before we kind of jump in is is uh, we talk about multiculturalism but even just kind of with this podcast and the reason why um, Larry and I connected because we have similar passions you know what I mean like I right. think when when um, it comes to working with students, but just giving back in general, I think, you know, we're, you know, head over heels about doing community service. I mean, right. you work in service learning at, you know, um, DCCD um, for you know, numerous years and, you know, continue to do that legacy of giving back to the community in every way, fashion. I, Absolutely. Yeah, I just applaud you for it, man. And it, it definitely aligns with me. And so, having the opportunity to do this podcast with you, man. Hey, I, mean, I was <laughs> glad that I, you know, honestly, just like the fact that uh, we've been able to vibe so easy because we've yeah. only been knowing each other two years and <laughs> yeah. you would think it was it was longer. But uh, I think we do share that passion. I think we do uh, want what's best for the students, want what's best for the community. And I think when we are dead and gone or whenever, you know, hopefully 180 yeah, years from exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. But we, we've we left a, a good footprint for those to follow behind us and uh, kind of pour into the students as the way that we do. Yeah. So. Um, so you're probably asking yourselves, you know, why is the Intercultural Network putting on a podcast? Well, um, of course, when we talk about the Intercultural Network, we focus on three uh, different main areas. Uh, one being a focus on student success, and so that looks like connecting students with a variety of different programs, resources on campus to be successful, um, connecting students with faculty and staff um, to serve as mentors or role models or support resources um, as they're dealing with the transition or navigating the transition um, from um, NTCC. And the third piece is just creating a safe space. You know, All we right. create a safe space so students can come and and have dialogue and conversations about a variety of different things. And so we do that in a, in a, in a multitude of ways, um, a lot of ways that align with the values that Larry and I share. But, you know, of course, first we do academic support. Um, we definitely focus on academics because we know that's what students are here for and, and to get their, get their grades, you know, so that they can um, better themselves and, and move up into whatever for, uh, field that they're they're looking to explore. Um, but we have, you know, tutoring that goes on in our spaces, um, academic advisor that's housed in our space to kind of support students um, in many shapes and forms. Um, and then we partner with different offices for academic workshops. Right. Um, and so we reference students to go to attend those. 
Um, that's one pillar. The next pillar we have is our social and emotional support, um, and that focuses on mentoring. Um, and so we have, um, I guess, drilled and, and um, trained a lot of faculty and staff mm-hmm. on campus for numerous hours, uh, preparing them to be great resources and mentors on campus for students. And so we have uh, definitely um, doing that because we know that sometimes navigating, you know, coming back to college can be difficult. Right. Um, I think one of the, the the good thing about our mentoring is, and I credit you for this, the, the mentor speed dating thing that we did, yeah. giving the students a chance to go and interact and greet yeah. and meet with different mentors instead of us just placing somebody <laughs> right. with somebody and right. then saying, you know, it's a bad relationship created. Yeah. But allowing those students and those faculty and staff members to interact before they decide to make that decision and giving the student the choice is like, hey, you know what, I think I fit best with this person. I think that is been tremendous right. especially you know on on our campus right yeah um next piece we focus on is career competency development so we partner with the career services um, department on campus across the district and we have different workshops uh, as it relates to resume to a variety of other things you know create linkedin profiles so forth and so on um, but really just trying to prepare students for that next phase in their life. Right. Um, you know, and, and um, our, ourselves, we, we're not experts, um, and so we always reference out to the career services, but, you know, our main focus is to really kind of prepare students uh, for that, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Yeah, especially the uh, career tours that we take as yeah, well, allowing students to go in different industries and learn more about the work that they're studying to do, um, which is what service learning does as right. well. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, the fourth pillar is our leadership skill development, and that focuses on developing leadership um, skills, pretty much what it says, um, for our students. And so that's to get involved with some club or organizations on campus, um, but definitely attending um, conferences where we take students to a variety of different conferences. And so you'll hear, of course, with announcements, um, but we are actually taking some students to the National Student uh, Diversity uh, Leadership yeah. Conference, conference in uh, uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Should be a, a lot of fun. Yeah. A um, lot of learning, uh, especially looking at the agenda that they had and the. Um, workshops that's going to be available i think it'll be a great opportunity for our students to dive in and learn in a different in a different setting so i think it'll be real good yeah and then another thing is we're you know looking to take them to the civil rights museum right so right. That, that'll be a great experience so good opportunity for students to get connected and involved but then also develop some leadership skills so uh, students if you're listening right make sure that you get your applications in fast yeah. you know it's it's they say the early bird gets the worm so right. make sure that you get those applications in and uh you've made a big impact with your faculty or your instructors and staff members that you've engaged with so they can write you a, a good recommendation letter right definitely um the last is our personal growth and development um that's kind of our area when we talk about community service um, that, that Larry and I are really passionate about. And so we at least do one to two community service projects a month um, just because that's something that we really enjoy doing, um, but definitely focusing on giving back to the community. But not only just going and doing the project, but having a conversation about why. Right, the you reflection. Know? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's probably the most critical portion of, of that. Um, and so that's really the, the pillars and, and the reason uh, why we, uh, the Intercultural Network, is taking part in this podcast. Yeah. And the good thing about the Intercultural Network, we have one on every campus. True. So yeah. uh, as Dantrell mentioned, he's uh, at the Trinity River campus. I am at the Southeast campus. We have Margina Burge, who's over at the Northeast campus. And Alex Vargas, she's over at the Northeast campus. And then we have Michael Russ, who's uh, over at the South campus. So we are there for you anytime that you need us. Uh, Our doors are always open. So take advantage of us as a resource and make sure that you are visiting, being active. And not only that, reaching back and grabbing someone else that you know 
needs the assistance as well and bringing them along and helping them get involved. Studies show that students that are highly involved on campus are the students that are likely to be successful. So this is your opportunity to dive in and really be successful. Right. All right. So now we're talking a little bit about why we are doing this work um, and why um, this particular podcast and, and topic. Well, great questions. You know, one of the things when we were looking at how do we branch out the intercultural network, how do we reach students where they are? Um, we had went to a couple of conferences right. and in and, uh, and, and some of those conferences had opportunity to connect with faculty and staff from different institutions. And uh, one institution actually was doing a podcast and we had Baylor right yeah yeah, yeah. Baylor and so uh, Larry and I took some time to kind of pick their brains after the session and um, they suggested that we look into doing one and so we decided to explore what TCC had to offer um, and found out that we have the opportunity to do it so we were like <laughs> sign us up right. you know <laughs> um, and we, we definitely are excited excited about uh, what we have in store for you all um, this semester, but it's going to be a great, great time. But the reason why uh, we're doing this work and the reason why we, we're passionate about it, cause we love we love working with students. Yeah, um, We love um, giving back, but helping, you know, kind of seeing that light bulb go off on right. students, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the students who have been through trouble past or, right. or have not had that support system that some of us had growing up. Uh, and being able to be be that support that the students need, letting them know that there is someone that cares about them, there is someone that wants what's best for them, and taking away that negative stereotype, the ne negative label that has been placed on some of our students, and giving them hope. Yeah. And I think, especially with how crazy times are right now, a lot of our students need hope. True. And so I think with us, we provide that to many of our students. Yeah, and you know, I, I think when we when we when we look at intercultural network, we look at um, it branches out to help serve all students on campus. And I'll say that again: that the intercultural network is here to serve all students and help students be successful. And so, in doing that, when we when we decided on the topic, we were like, okay, well, what really makes sense for our office? Like, what? word or term would really bring together what we stand on and what we're really about and so um, Larry and I got to talking and uh, he said you know what multiculturalism that's that's it and I was like yeah that's that 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 word definitely solves up everything um, that we're trying to do um, inward and outward with our students it's the true definition of supporting every ethnicity every background every culture and being in the united states of america there 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 are so many cultures going i mean that are coming here that are here and it, i mean look how many people have moved to the united states what for wanting a better chance at life so it's, n it's no longer like every place that we're going to go, we're going to see somebody that looks like us. So having that cultural competence mm. and and yes. knowledge of how to interact and how to appreciate what other cultures can bring to us, I mean, it's priceless. So why not dive into it, man? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we... we um when I when he when he first uh, initially brought up the the podcast and talking about multiculturalism, you know, we kind of thinking about okay, how do we really talk about it and really dive into it in a way that I think our listeners would really enjoy. Um, and so I would say that it, you, we have an exciting lineup, and we'll talk about that, of course, a little bit later. But you know, really reaching out to bringing in faculty and staff and students yeah. from different backgrounds to really give a perspective of what they think multiculturalism is. I mean, I don't think, I think of multiculturalism, I think multiculturalism, multiculturalism is not necessarily like a rejection of, of like your own culture. No, uh, not at all. Yeah, you know, it's more like, you know, wanting and desiring and learning more about um, your own culture, but then respect for other cultures as well, but then learning how they blend together mm -hmm. in certain aspects you know yeah so. it, it's funny um fry 
Friday, uh, one of my students came up to the office and some of the staff and I were in there. We we're just having a general conversation about uh, ethnicity and take it. I have someone that's from Nigeria, mm. <laughs> someone that's uh, he's uh, Arabian. And then I have another guy. He said he mixed with everything. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, but these are the people that work with me and, and, and we're just having a conversation about what does society need in order for a more peaceful environment. Mm. And especially like, I mean, you hear about the shooting that happened in uh, White Settlement. White Settlement, yeah. And you think, man, what, what would make a person that angry at uh, another person that you don't even know based off of skin color, religion, you know. Yeah. And so um, we start thinking about things that we can do on our campus to to make everybody feel welcome to come into the intercultural network because we're not, you know, the, the black network or right. the white <laughs> network or the Hispanic <laughs> network. You know, we are we were created in order to help others of all backgrounds. So... Um, it's time to put up or shut up. Right. So let me ask you a question, man, just off the top of my head. When we talk about multiculturalism, like, I know I kind of you talked a little bit about what springs to mind when we when the word multiculturalism comes in, but, you know, what are, what are the good things about multiculturalism? As I mentioned, like, one, the learning of it, man. Um, it's funny how much I hated history in school, <laughs> and now it's like I want to know so much about it, you yeah. know. Um, and then just being able to know what's respectful and what's not respectful. Uh, I had a young uh, Muslim young lady, um, and I, I didn't know, you know. And I reached out, I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" To shake her hand, she's like, "I don't shake hands." <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, you know," yeah. but. Getting to know those type of things was crazy. It's a hired her. Yeah. So <laughs> she was my first work study student, yeah. and I hired her because I wanted to learn more about it, right. you know. And she taught me so much during that the, the semester that she was with me before she transferred to a, a university. But just being able to learn more about people, to respect what others do, and just to be able to know, like, as much as they can contribute to my life, I can contribute to theirs. So as this world continues to grow, as this nation, this country continues to grow, so is the diversity in this country. And if you're not culturally competent, you're going to have one of those uh, hashtag I'm sorry, I yeah. apologize messages. Are you really sorry, though? Right. You know, so I want to know that before, you know, it's, it's almost like we're being proactive. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I think about is when we talk about like like you just said, like learning is that I've always had a desire to learn. You know, what I mean, like I've always wanted to know more, um, not only about myself, but really just about others and kind right. of why why other people do what they do or think the way they think or, you know, why their culture like do certain things. And Man, I'm, like, I'm a psychology major. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, right. I want to know. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was like, wow. Like, um, I was part of this summer program in high school. It was called uh, MS Squared Math and Science Program for, for, for uh, minority students. And, you know, I grew up in Memphis. Memphis at that during the time when I was growing up was just black and white. That was mm -hmm. it. I mean, you had, you know, a sprinkle of other cultures, but, you know, that nothing. So when I went part when I went to this program and I saw people from, you know, all facets of the world, I was like, wow. Right. And, you know, I'm sitting down having a conversation with uh, my roommate. He was from Japan. Um, you know, he was an atheist. And, you know, we had probably the best conversations <laughs> on a daily basis that, you know, some people are scared to even have with their own they scared family. Of conflict. Yeah, you know, scared of, of the their conflict. Own. Yeah. yeah. And so I just it was from it was that pivotal moment for me that I learned that the world is so much bigger, and I just wanted to know more about other cultures. You know, yeah, so. that's one of my uh, dream vacations is to just go over there and spend some time. Um, Japan, yeah. Egypt, yeah, you know, and, and just learn and and 
dive in. Uh, my, my friends call me a forever student because every time they turn around, I'm taking classes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, man, if, 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 if you don't educate yourself, you, you, you will never know. So um, I'm, I'm excited about the education that we'll get during this podcast with some of our guests that will be that will, that will be attending. So yeah. um, tell me about your uh, multicultural experience. Like what made you passionate about it? Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of things that made me passionate about my multicultural experience. <laughs> um, being a young man, I won't touch on some of those. But keep it PG. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, keep, gotta keep it PG for TCC. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, when we we talk about multiculturalism, like I just had a desire to learn, man, and I really wanted to know more about other people um, because. When I was at Iowa State for my undergrad, like I worked in student affairs office. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, I worked in a multicultural affairs office, but I, and I worked in numerous areas, but multicultural affairs was where I was passionate about. And so in that office area, like I was forced to have to acknowledge and learn about different cultures as part of my job as a student employee. And during that process, like I just was infatuated with just knowing more about yeah. who these individuals were and so in, in gaining that knowledge and through that process um, you know I decided to pursue a f- field in, in student affairs and I was just like wow like if I'm going to work with students from different backgrounds then I need to equip myself with as much knowledge as I can mm-hmm. about different cultures you know? so but a lot of people are intimidated by that were True. you were you not um, no, nah. you know what I mean? Cause yeah. I, I was okay to make a mistake because I felt like through that mistake, I would learn a lot more. Right. And so, you know, if I said something that offended somebody, I would say, well, I apologize. I didn't know. Um, you know, I, I want to know more, you know, why mm-hmm. is that offensive? So that maybe if I meet somebody else similar that I won't say that or do that act that, that makes it to be offensive. Um, but, you know, I never was scared to have those conversations, never scared to have those conversations. I guess it's from, you know, my dad. When my dad was living, he just would just talk to anybody, yeah. you know, about anything. And, you know, he was he, he would say some some crazy stuff all the <laughs> damn time. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, it, it's, I just got that from him, I guess. That's what's up. I, I think for me, uh, and I, I, I've shared this story with you. Um, I was in DISD. It's Dallas, Dallas ISD. And uh, my school was like 99.9% African American. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, we had Caucasian teachers, but like kids, mm-mm. yeah. I think we may, that 1%, we may have had a couple Hispanic kids, but that was it. And then I was getting into some trouble. Even though I was a, 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 a straight A student, I'm still. Yeah. Boys will be boys. <laughs> and uh, my parents couldn't take it. They moved me out to DeSoto. And, man, we got DeSoto, and it was like 87% Caucasian. I was like, I came home the first day, and I was like, Mom, they got little white boys at this school. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, yeah. And I was like, I had never seen one in, like, wow. real life. Oh, and wow. I was seventh, eighth grade. If I had seen one, I had never had an interaction, mm. you know, because – I mean, we didn't we didn't go a lot of places to see that, so it was it was a cultural shock. I was like, "This is not what's up." <laughs> like, right. transfer me back. <laughs> right. And uh, my first year there, man, I didn't do good, man. Actually, I failed the mm. seventh grade, but I passed enough that I could go to summer school and I wouldn't get behind. So it let me know right then, like, okay, I don't want to flunk. So let right, me let yeah. me get with the program. With the program yeah. But I was trying to prove a point to my parents and they were trying to prove a point to me. Yeah. And um I thanked them so much. So mama daddy, thank right. y'all for moving me to DeSoto because it brought my my whole perspective on life, my whole perspective on interactions and I could tell when I started new jobs of how I was 
used to interacting with certain people, interacting on certain uh, levels, being able to use beyond tier one words. And then next thing you know, I'm working for the city of Dallas. I'm in their multicultural department, right, right, right. which uh, my boss was from Cuba. Dang. And well, I had two people I reported to. One was from Cuba. One was from, uh, I don't even remember, like Argentina or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, nevertheless, yeah. um so I really had to be alert and they having people call them. So it let me really dive into working with a diverse community, working and take it. Most of my stuff was in South Dallas, but mm. just because I was in South Dallas does not mean I was just solely focused on African-Americans. But being and being able to get that experience while I was working for the city of Dallas man was right. a wake up now they gave me a lot of gray hairs as oh, you can yeah. see in my beard <laughs> but but the experience of getting to meet people getting to network getting to learn and know about different things different cultures uh, was priceless mm. so, so let me ask you a question why do you think people are scared to have those conversations around multiculturalism um history mm. you know you you hear what ancestors have done in the past, and sometimes people feel like they'll be judged off of that. Um, then you have people that just are not really open mm. to to meeting people, um, and some are just biased. Yeah. I mean, just if we just being real, you know, it's just yeah. like they don't want to. So you have it on three different levels. You have those who are open to it but not sure how to approach it. Right. Then you have those that are just like, uh, that's not my style. You know, I don't have a problem with anybody, but I'm just kind of neutral. And then you just have those that just don't give a crap. Mm. Yeah, because I, I think about why we don't have these conversations. I think it's like you just said, just people are just afraid that they're going to offend somebody. Yeah. And so instead of, instead of trying to work through that learning phase, they just say, you know what, I'm going to steer away from, mm -hmm. from diving in and having those conversations. But, you know, like you and I have just talked about, like it was through those instances that we actually, you know, out of our ignorance, we learned. Yeah. And we became better about it. I had it. a lot of hiccups. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I remember one time I had told a coworker, I said, Man, I don't know if this job for me because I can't understand nothing that's coming out of these people's mouth. <laughs> and... I didn't know she was going to go back and tell my right. boss. <laughs> so my boss came to me and she was like, hey, just listen slowly. And I remember Bible verse, you know, it'd be, you know, quick to listen. I mean, quick to listen, slow to speak. Right. And so uh, I, I started listening more and my work improved mm. <laughs> and my relationships improved. And I, I built so many relationships while I was there and relationships I still have now um, from me getting that criticism but not taking it as always oh, an attack on me right but it's a learning lesson for me yeah. and i think if a lot of people take what happens with these interactions these com conversations and and look at it as a learning lesson oh man it'd yeah. be beautiful yeah it's crazy man because when i was uh so i did a when i was at university of south carolina we were required to do an internship at a different institution and so I did my internship at the University of New Mexico because I wanted to learn more about Native American students and, and uh, Hispanic students. Um, <clears throat> and so when I was um, there interning, I worked with the gear up, you know, through Trio and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So um, a lot of these students were middle school and high school students. I did my internship in Trio. Really? <laughs> See, that's the reason why we jail, bro. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm there and I'm working with these students. And so I'm overseeing one of the dormitories. And these, I get a phone call um, from one of my RAs, and they're like, hey, um, we need you to hurry up and get over here. These students are seeing ghosts. And I was like, <laughs> ghosts? You know, Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, first off, you know what I'm saying, it's a, a black guy. Like, well, don't call me. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But then I was like, okay, I am the person on charge. I'll do this. I guess I got to go over here. So I get over there. Um, and so it was a, a Native American uh, female students that they were there. And those, they were, you know, hysterical and crying. And they were saying they were, you know, seeing some ghosts walking through throughout the halls. And, and you know, so we had to go to the room. And I'm in the room looking. You know what I mean? And so 
Um, it was an educational moment for me because, you know, these young ladies are frantic for their lives. Right. And, and so, you know, my boss uh, came in and we had to actually bring in the shaman and they had to bless the rooms. And, uh, man, it was it was a huge learning curve for me. But just think, if, if had y'all taken an approach of, you know what, y'all on drugs, y'all hallucinating, y'all <laughs> right. need to chill, go back to bed. But you took a different approach. Yeah. And again, like you said, it was a learning lesson. I don't know if I would have went though. Man, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That building was kind of old. So <laughs> I was like, hey, they probably are seeing some ghosts flying through this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, man, I don't play with that. Yeah, yeah, me either, man. But you know, like like I said before, it's just it was just a learning experience, and it was just something that you know will always stick in my mind when I'm talking to to students about you know it's okay to be ignorant. Uh, but you have to learn through and learn about, you know, um, um, you know, learn about the the, uh, the situation and the and the instances going on. So, yeah, I mean, but if they the, the key is wanting to yeah. and taking the initiative to because you can say, OK, you know, I apologize, you know, or I'm sorry, I didn't know. But the next I'm step sorry is if I did something wrong. To report a problem, you can send feedback. Oh, okay, that was something else. But the key is taking the initiative to correct that or learn about it. And if we don't do that, then that's where we're going to struggle. Right. Um, so... So, yeah, so that's a little bit about what we're going to be talking about throughout the semester. Um, just so you know, um, we're going to be diving into different areas of multiculturalism and getting um, our perspectives. But then we're going to bring in some other individuals. And so I just want to kind of give you a schedule. Uh, we will be um, bringing in faculty from different backgrounds, um, some faculty from Hispanic, African-American, Native American, um, Asian American, Middle Eastern, Caucasian backgrounds that are going to give you a, their perspective of what multiculturalism is. And then after spring break, um, we'll have the opportunity of bringing in some of our students, uh, male and female students, to talk about um, specifically what multiculturalism that means to them, um, how they've experienced multiculturalism in their daily lives, and then what can we do to educate and bring together more students so that they um, don't have those hiccup moments so that um, to be able to understand different cultures. Um, and so we will be um, running a podcast, of course, every week um, on Tuesdays from 2 to 3 p.m. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm uh, I'm excited about the faculty, but I'm really excited about what yeah. the students are going to say, because. Um, you know, as us, us as professionals, we can keep it filtered. Right. You know? yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. But, you know, the students are, they're open, they're honest. And I feel like we're honest, but, you know, I think they're just going to be straight, straight shooters. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it'll be good because it's, it's as we continue to grow as a college as well, uh, students need to know, you know, what's what's okay to say and what's what's not okay um yeah that's true so um but before we close out uh we want to give you a few announcements um as you know the intercultural network we're on six different campuses as i mentioned earlier so uh starting on the 21st next week we will have our spring kickoff at the South Campus on the 21st at 1 p.m. And then the following day on the 22nd, the Northwest Campus will have their kickoff at 12.30 p.m. And that will take place in WTLO 3101. And then we're going to hop to the next week on January the 27th at 11.30. The Connect Campus will host their kickoff in the training room. And then the South, uh, the Trinity River campus will have theirs on the 28th in the Intercultural Network at 2 p.m. 
The South Campus will host theirs as well at 12.30 in the ballroom. And then on the 30th, we will conclude with the Northeast Campus having their kickoff and at 1 p.m. in NSTU 1506. So if you have an opportunity, please stop by uh, whichever campus that you're at or on that day if you're at multiple campuses, go to multiple yeah. um, because it's a di- different feel at every campus. Free food. And it's free food. <laughs> it's good food, too. Not, it's good food, too. Not, you know, we'll try not to do Mr. Jim's Pizza. Right. <laughs> no knock at Mr. Jim's Pizza, though. <laughs> I, know my stu- I, just know, I know my students are tired of oh, it, though. Oh, man. But, I mean, we, 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 man, we order a lot of Mr. Jim's Pizza. But, nevertheless... Uh, please stop by and visit. Bring a friend. Yeah, um, definitely. And go make friends. Yeah. Um, and that's key, man. You know, like, find somebody to learn from. And that's that's why we have the Intercultural Network. We we want to grow you academically, but we also want to, you know, take you away from those cell phone screens yeah. and those computer screens <laughs> and get you to talk because, yeah. you know, in order to be successful, you're going to have to talk to people. And if you don't know how to socialize, you're going to have some problems. Right. So, um, yeah. Dan Trill is going to uh, end this with a, with, a, with, a, with a quote. But before I do that, I have to say this. One of the things that Larry and I did not share um, about us is, is we're, we're um, huge sports fanatics. <laughs> um, and so he is a, a Lakers fan, 16, yes, 16 championships. <laughs> is 16? 15. 16? Nah. How many Celtics have? I think we got 17. Or maybe we have 16. Nah, I thought y'all had 18. 18? I don't know. I think Uh Lakers got 16. I don't know. But they're the best team, though. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so uh, next week, the Lakers and uh, the uh, Celtics play. You know Um, it. (laughs) So uh, if one of us doesn't show up next week, you'll know what happened. Hey, and for y'all listening, <laughs> Dentrell and I went to watch the game together last year, and Rondo, yeah. of all people, oh, hit man. the game-winning shot to, yeah. for the Lakers to win over the Celtics. So no, I'm hey. still mad about that because you, you don't even be on social media, but you put me on social media. Hey, <laughs> I had to. I had to on that one. Yeah, you won't find me on those social uh-huh. media. But, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to end with this quote. Uh, one of the things that be a kind of our trademark for all of our podcasters, and so it says – until you treat everyone as equal, you have no right to complain about the treatment you receive from anyone. And so I think that that kind of opens the door for what we're going to be talking about throughout the semester. I like so, that. Yeah. I yeah, like that. Yeah. So, all right, listeners, see y'all next week. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>